Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. In today's video, my dad and I are going to be pruning these green giant arborvitaes that we originally planted in 2020. Now, they were planted and only about maybe two, maybe three feet tall when we first planted them. Now they're standing at probably about 10 feet, some of the taller ones, 10 to 11 feet. Um, we only want this hedge to be maybe about on like the 10 to 12 foot range. So we're gonna give them an initial prune today. And then the other thing too is we're gonna do just a little bit of a prune on the side, just so it creates a little bit of a green wall. And we don't want them to prune out too much or uh, to grow out too much from where they are now. So we're gonna do an initial prune today. So we'll do the whole process and then I'll show you at the end kind of why we made the decisions that we made. Um, and hopefully that'll make more sense for those of you that haven't pruned arborvitaes before. So the arborvitaes are all pruned. As you can see, I did none of the work. This is all the work of my dad. But I wanna show you why we specifically cut in certain places and kind of how that's gonna shape it for the future. So first thing that we did was we cut all the tops off of them. I know it's not the easiest to see, um, but you can see that they're pretty much all the same level. They're probably somewhere between about like nine to maybe 10 feet, probably like eight to nine feet, I would say, um, is likely what it is. And then the shape that we were trying to go for was to have them a little bit wider at the bottom and then narrow in a little bit towards the top. But it's hard because when you look at them this way, you can see that there's still a lot of holes that need to fill in. So we just did a very light prune towards the top just to give them almost a tip pinch and then that will encourage them to branch out more. But what we also did at the bottom was we did have it curve in just a tiny bit just to clean it up so that way when we do clean up this entire thing you'll still be able to see the mulch at the bottom and it's just a nice clean line. We also can get in in the spring and put fertilizer down um, and then also you know you'll still be able to see a nice clean definition between arborvitae, mulch, and grass. We're gonna clean up all these cuttings as well, but my dad's gonna take care of that when he does all the leaves. We were just gonna cut it for today because that's what we have time for, um, but this was the biggest job to get done, so I'm happy that it's all set. Here is kind of a backed up view of what all these arborvitaes look like. And you can see it's really starting to take shape. Now these are a little bit shorter at the bottom. So we just did a little bit of a tip pinch at the top, even though they're a tiny bit shorter than the ones here. I know it's a little difficult to see, um, but it's just to encourage more branching at the top. So that way they're not so sparse at the top for next season. Now we also did this side as well. And these arborvitaes had a little bit of a different situation, mainly because they get a lot more shade than the other arborvitaes. So they don't grow nearly as fast. Uh, what we ended up doing with these was we didn't touch the tops because they're not quite at the uh, height that we want them to be at. They'll pretty much end up being at the same height in the end. Um, but we did end up pruning the sides of them a little bit. Just, again, just to clean it up, um, as you can kind of see here, we cut it at an angle at the bottom and that will help them grow a little bit denser and fuller for next year. So that way when you do look at them head on, they will end up covering pretty much that entire fence. <laughs> 
Now, one thing that's really important to mention when you are starting to prune a hedge, especially an evergreen hedge for the first time, is you want to prune them in deeper than what you want them to ultimately be. And the reason why is a lot of plants, especially like arborvitaes, once you prune them and once they grow out to a certain point, you can't prune them in further than that. Otherwise, you can cause more damage to those plants. So what we're going to do is we did an initial prune now, and then every year we'll just go out like a tiny bit more or kind of keep it at about the same length. So it gives us some more wiggle room where they can still grow out like another foot or so and we'll still be okay with um, how far out they are. You can see that we made some cuts here and nothing was really any bigger than this. But if you keep going further and further into the plant, especially where you can see that there's some shedding this year, um, if you keep going that far in, it may not actually be able to regrow from that and it could cause issues with having holes in the plants or ultimately just having like a dead look at the bottom of the plant. So that's why it's super important to be proactive about pruning in further the first year and then you can slowly let it out after that. One last thing I wanted to just know is about the time of year to do it. We're ultimately going to be pruning the arborvitaes every fall, ideally in about October or November. Just the climate that we have is when it's gonna be like 50s, maybe 40s and 60s um, at this time of year. But it's a great time of year where it's still above freezing, but it's not too hot where it's gonna cause any stress to the plants. So that's it for this season. We'll just end up pruning them on a once a year basis. We'll do it twice a year if we absolutely have to, but ideally I'd like to just do it one time of year and then that'll be pretty much it. So if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section down below. Besides that, I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one.